Welcome back to the Wandering Wind Church. Today I am reading Step 1, Day 16 of the Life Recovery Devotional. And today's title is Self-Control versus Willpower. Our reading for today is Galatians 5, 16 through 23. Step 1, we admitted that we were powerless over our dependencies and that our lives had become unmanageable. There's a struggle going on inside of us, a fight for control. Our willpower fails us repeatedly. Where can we turn when we realize that we can't control ourselves? The Apostle Paul says, Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen and amen. If I've got those fruits in my life, I'm good. <clears throat> self-control is not willpower. Let me say this again. Self-control is not willpower. It's not something we get by gritting our teeth and forcing ourselves to just say no. Just say no. Self-control is called a fruit. Fruit doesn't instantly pop out on the tree. As the tree grows and seasons pass, the fruit naturally develops. As we continue to follow God's guidance, taking one step at a time, our self-control will naturally grow. Our job, my job, your job, is to stay connected to God. It's the Holy Spirit's job to produce the fruit of self-control. As God takes control of our lives, self-control will be the natural result. So, what can we take away from this particular reading today? Well, first of all, being self-controlled is not something you can decide when you're going to have that. Your decision remains to be this. Stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to the tree that gives good things in our lives. Stay connected to Jesus so that he can produce the fruit of, fruit of the Spirit in our lives through his Holy Spirit. It's not our choice. It's not our job to force the fruit. You don't force apples to grow in winter or a plant that grows well in winter to grow in summer. You can't do that. What you can do, what you do, is you stay connected to the vine. You stay connected by going to, going to your meetings, first of all, to be able to stay connected to people that are in recovery, but also stay connected to Jesus by reading the Word, by studying His Word every day, by prayer and meditation and time with God and doing things that help you to grow that commitment and that connection and that relationship. Because how do we connect with each other? Through relationship. How do we grow a relationship? By communication. We talk and then we listen. How do we do the same with God? It's the same thing. You pray to God, you're talking to God, and then afterwards you sit and you meditate and you listen. You listen because when you are still, when you are silent, when you just let him speak, he will. He might not do it audibly. For a lot of us, he doesn't. For a lot of us, he doesn't speak with words. He speaks with impressions and emotions and with his spirit directly in us. He influences us through that so that, that way we know what his will is, what his good and perfect will is for our lives. And that is why we do what we do. We don't go to church because it's expected. We go to church because we want to be connected to the body of Christ and to God himself. So please, do not forsake the gathering of the saints as much as you can. That is another big thing. But also, do not forsake the gathering of those that know your journey of recovery and can help you stay on the path. Because that is how we strengthen one another. Um... The most powerful vehicle for recovery is the group is a, a phrase that is used in 
a lot of anonymous settings and it's it's true the most powerful vehicle for staying in recovery is staying in connection with other people in recovery because they know the struggle and they can help you through it they can give advice and they can give testimony to how they were they were helped through times of difficulty and through struggles that they had in the same way we need to do the same we need to seek the wisdom of those that came before us so that we can be the wisdom for those who come after. That is why we are who we are. Remember, the journey of recovery is not by leaps and bounds, but by steps and inches. You know, it's not a, I have to get to the finish line now. It's a, did I make progress today? Did I make progress? Because we always look for progress, never Look for perfection because perfection is the enemy of progress. Because when we seek perfection and we fail to attain it, we lose focus. But when we seek progress and we fa and we succeed in attaining it, then we gain courage. We gain encouragement from it because we see ourselves moving forward. So remember that. Remember that I am praying for you in your recovery, and please remember to pray for me as well in mine, so that I might continue to be able to grow in my recovery, so that I might be able to continue to grow to help you and yours, and to inspire you and yours. Please do not forsake prayer in all things. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. God keep you safe. God keep you on the right path. And I will see you again soon, God willing.